uh, treat for you. It's called Tasty Tweets. These guys are from uh, Denmark. And so, uh, without further ado, I'll introduce you to Tasty Tweets. Thanks. Applause. So, hello everyone and welcome. I hope everyone is having fun uh, so far in the conference. So, we are Tasty Tweets. Uh, my name is Costa, this is Kat, and this is Ruben. And we are going to present to you our project, as well as talk to you about data visualization in general beyond a video for you to illustrate the concept. I hope you enjoyed. And there is no sound. Yeah. One more time. This is the video of Tasty Tweets. I can sing if you want. We have a live demonstration afterwards, so you, you will get to experience it uh, later on. Uh, how it works, uh, we also have a small video showing the uh, mechanics behind the scenes. So really quickly, in, in, into more detail how it works. Uh, we use the Twitter API uh, in order to collect uh, uh, mentions of different flavors on Twitter. Uh, we calculate the proportions of uh, these flavors and we send it uh, to an Arduino, which is responsible to control solenoid valves, which essentially what they do, they are, are controlling the flow of the liquid into the glass. Uh, then, as an ad additional layer, we used uh, processing in order to create uh, a more graphical uh, representation. Um, so this allowed us allowed the user to uh, to uh, compare the tangible experience of tasty tweets with the graphical experience, uh, the graph versus the smoothie. So, uh, without further ado. Um, so, what's actually the point of making such a machine during a data visualization course at the uh, Copenhagen Institute of Interaction Design, because that's actually what we did. Um, so, what's the point of making such a machine? Well, uh, traditional data visualization through graphics actually can be a success. We don't say it, it can be. We don't say it can be a success. So, of course, there are like some examples which are pretty good. Like, for instance, this is from the 2012 Olympics, which compares several at least from several different disciplines uh, their physique, their weight, uh, their, their length and it's quite effective and quite entertainment, uh, entertaining as well. Um, this is another uh, recent uh, data visualization from Raureif, uh, it's a German based company and what they actually try to do is 
um, show the water footprint of several products uh, using uh, familiar references. So again, really effective. You immediately see, for instance, tea, how much water you, uh, it consumes to actually make, make a cup of tea, water, wheat. Again, really effective, really entertaining, and really useful. Um, also, another way to use data references, uh, data visualization is using uh, uh, and establishing patterns. This is from uh, tracking blood sugar uh, readings from Jana Beck. She's an American uh, student, I think. And what she actually did over uh, 100 days, she actually tracked her blood sugar uh, level, but also the amount of insulin she she injected. Oh, and what you actually really can see is that the more insulin. Uh, Oh, the more insulin she ejected, the lower the blood sugar become. And it's really good to actually um, see the trends in, their in our blood sugar thing and a really effective way of data visualization. On the other hand, we have the less, maybe less successful examples, like we all know the pie charts, maybe, re maybe efficient, but again, pretty boring and, um, well, pretty straightforward and not really entertaining, not really uh, what we want. Um, another thing, this is from weight, uh, there's a weight tracking uh, diagram from the quantifier itself and actually what it, what it shows, it shows the weight uh, over time. Really effective, but what, what do you actually want, want to do if you make such a graph? You want to, you want to trigger people uh, to maybe lose weight and um, this graph, it analyzes and shows the, the weight, but it's not triggering action. Um, another example, uh, super confusing. <laughs> um, it shows a social network. Um, you, you can read the global trends, but that's about it. So what we experience is data visualization is well, quite visual, but not very exciting. So that's, that's what we wanted to, to change, and that's what we wanted to trigger with this, this short experiment. It was a five-day experiment so so what we try to do with this tasty tweet is try to create a more tangible approach approach towards data visualization and maybe break away from the traditional means of data visualization um, so what we try to do is go from data visualization to a data representation by creating smoothies based on Twitter so what we actually try to do is incorporate smell and taste in a really simple, basic, but understanding form to, to show what's going on in the world around you using Twitter. So, oh man. No. Great. Um, I don't know if you guys can actually hear me. I feel like we're competing with the other stage here for sound. But um, basically, going off of what uh, Ruben just mentioned, we came up with a few other examples that we think will uh, fit under this category of representing data through tangible means. And the first one is by Fabian Winkler. Uh, he's a student, uh, he's a PhD student at Purdue University, um, or was at some point, and the project is called Clink. And the point of the project is uh, to represent social dynamics in a room with color. So um, as the illustration uh, shows or maybe doesn't but the point is that there are different LEDs in each glass with different colors and when you click them together they change into a color that is a combination of the two so it's a quick way to illustrate who's talking to who and what the social dynamics in a closed room are and it's another um, example of how data can be made more exciting and also live and something that could change and trigger behavior in people so that people maybe will be more inclined to move around the room. Um, another one is actually by uh, our fellow students at the Copenhagen Institute of Interaction Design, uh, Momo Miyazaki, Kenneth Robertson, and Manas Karambelkar, I probably butchered his name, uh, and it's called Silence. And what they did is uh, they took um, three different languages, English, French, and Danish. And this project was inspired originally by the Dan Danish language, which is notorious for swallowing half of their sentences and making it impossible to understand for foreigners like myself, um, and as well as our um, fellow students. So they took the um, they took the letters that are not pronounced, and they printed them in red, and then they made these um, little goggles, I guess, that you can look through the book and you can see the letters that are invisible to you and basically still be able to read what's written. 
And a quick way to see the effect of all of those non unpronounced letters is to put them at the end of the book and print them in a different col on a different colored pages. So this is a quick way to visualize how much paper we're wasting by printing all those unpronounced letter letters. Not to say that we should change languages in any way, but um, it's just another way to hold data in your hand and make it more tangible and exciting. Then um, this one um, is uh, a project uh, uh, from Art Plus Com. It's a Berlin-based company, and they, it's called Dropping News. And uh, it's uh, the idea is to create uh, collect uh, collecting news data and making it uh, turning it into an, an edible uh, experience. So uh, the 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 idea is that through all of those different containers, depending on how much of uh, whatever news are mentioned, they're dropping into different glasses. Sounds familiar, maybe. Um, then, so since we're in the biohacking stage, you might be wondering, what does this have to do with biohacking? And we've given it some some thought, and we uh, decided to that it has a, a lot of uh, deep relationship with uh, the, quant the idea of the quantified self. And if you're not familiar with it, that's the concept of tracking yourself and tracking everything about you, like your heart rate, your physical activity level, and everything that has to do with yourself. So basically, why not take a step beyond collecting that data, and why not make it more actionable, right? So. Um, the technology is already there. There are things like bases, fuel band, some of you might probably use it, Fitbit, very popular now, um, the up wrist band, and they're all doing the same thing. They're collecting data about you, they're collecting your activity level, they're coll collecting your heart rate, and then there are apps like the Eatery and Datum that allow you to collect uh, either um, information about what you're eating or information about your daily activity, what you're drinking, how much you're running, where you're running, etc. So we already have the technology to collect all of it, so why not allow the individual to experience their own daily trends. So why not connect your personal data with, with devices that create a tangible experience catered to your need? And what I'm talking about here is um, turning devices like Tasty Tweets into um, um, something that can create a smoothie or maybe protein shake, shake that is based on your daily activity that gives you the right amount of protein, that gives you the right amount of carbohydrates depending on, on your daily needs. So again, generating data through daily activity, food intake, other metrics, uh, collecting it and turning it into something edible or tangible or more exciting in general, right? So for example, uh, there's a guy who's currently working at um, our institute um, in the consulting uh, section and he's a graduate of the Malmo University and he worked on this project for his thesis. It's called Making Dreams Physical. And um, the idea is connecting uh, your sleep data with your morning coffee blend. So he made this waistband that collected, it had accelerometers, it had stretch sensors in it, it had temperature sensors in it that collected data about you while you were sleeping. And when you'd wake up, it would make you a morning coffee blend depending on your sleep, sleeping pattern. So that's just another quick example of how this could be applied in real life and how this, those machines can be applied in real life. And uh, the point that we haven't mentioned earlier is that a lot of um, this was all made with open source technology. So you can make this at your home and all of this is available to you. And a lot of the data collection tools are available to you as well. So you can make this, this type of stuff at your house. And this is another photo of uh, them tinkering with the uh, with the, with the machine and it had uh, four different containers with four different coffee blends that uh, would uh, be collected by the grinder and then turned into your perfect coffee blend in the morning. Okay, so that's, uh, that's it for the presentation and now why don't we try out the machine and why don't we actually taste uh, today's Twitter trends. Whoops. Uh, so what we're going to try to do now is uh, see, this is uh, a smoothie made about an hour ago when we were setting up. Uh, we're going to try and create a new smoothie and see how it's going to change uh, depending on the different flavors mentioned right now on Twitter.
Yeah. So what is going on right now is, as you can see on the screen, we have uh, on the right side, we have uh, a representation of the different smoothies. And as they are generated, uh, you see the proportions increasing. On the left side, we have uh, some of the tweets that consisted, that made this smoothie uh, become. I mean, uh, the, the graphical representation runs a little bit faster than this, but uh, you can see it. Uh, you can read some of the, tits, um, the tweets. I'm really sorry. I can not guarantee there are not uh, there are no weird tweets over there. We had no control over them, but yeah. So right now, it should be coming to an end soon. Uh, so we have orange at 19 percent, three percent cranberry. Pineapple is at 33 and 43 is, uh, what is it? Yeah, apples, yeah. So our smoothie is almost done, I think. Yeah, so maybe we should try it. Does anyone want to try it? Who wants to taste Twitter? Another thing is that the way we have generated the, the installation, as the, the smoothie is constructed, it is possible to see the layers of smoothie, uh, the layers of each juice within the glass. So this gives an, an additional layer of uh, visualizing what proportions are in the, in the smoothie. Y yes. Question? So, yeah, yeah, all right. So can we also manu start manipulating the, the yes, flavors? Yes, that's the next step. <laughs> all right, all right. We're, we're going to try and influence Twitter. I'm so excited. <laughs> All yeah. right. I see. Uh, what is it? Is that Apple? Is that Apple? Yeah. This one? So this one, this one is Apple. This yeah. one is uh, orange. Yeah. This one is cranberry. And this one is pineapple. Okay. Pineapple seems to be very popular at the moment. Yeah. Trending on Twitter. Pineapple. S s so <laughs> let's, let's, let's try and tweet for cranberry and see if we can right. influence. I don't know how many of you have... Uh, 3G or connectivity right now over yeah. here, but let's start tweeting. We, we uh, don't have enough cranberry at the moment. Come on, I want some cranberry <laughs> in that juice. So, can we influence we the smoothie? Question? We have a question from the audience. Oh, of course, go for it. Yeah, how do you match uh, some? How do you match trends and uh, uh, these uh, flavors? How do you match? Yeah. The, yeah. Ah well, yeah. Who, who choose like you have to? Well, this is, is no. there. The of course they they choose the four flavors and like whatever comes up on Twitter, gets in your drink. <laughs> but well, hello, hello. I don't know. Yeah, yeah the, we had a short question if who, what flavor we chose and why we chose them. I think that was the question, right? Uh, now for this conference, we just those choose those flavors. Um, actually, what we wanted to do, which was not totally allowed, was making cocktails. For instance, we can choose anywhere we want. Maybe we could also do vodka, tequila, whatever. And then we can make the make a Twitter cocktail. For instance, we can choose any word, but of course we have maybe to after twelve o'clock. Yeah. I don't know. Did so did anyone tweet cranberry? I don't see a lot of excitement. I see one over here. I don't think we can. So, in short, it's it's no use tweeting tweeting vodka. D don't don't yeah. <laughs> tweet alcohol. I saw you. <laughs> it's, it's just useless, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's try. It. Wait. Wait, though. <laughs> okay. So, wh what do we have? I can't. I can't uh, read well from here. What do we have now? So right now we, are, we still don't know the proportions because yeah. the smoothie is not made. Yeah. Oh, I see, I see it filling up. I see the cup. Uh, the one Come on, the guys. We can do better than this. I want more cranberry in there. Come on. Let's start tweeting. <laughs> cranberry. <laughs> Doesn't anybody like Actually, cranberry it here? Looks, what is, it looks what like is wrong with you? <laughs> it looks like cranberry do is doing better than before, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink the cranberry. <laughs> All right, well, I'll see some cranberry coming in. So, 
So who's up for the next drink? You know, to get that uh, pasta. Like, did you have the tortellini? What did you have? A bratwurst? What did you eat? What did you eat? A donut. A donut. Yeah. What do you think goes well with a donut? Cranberry. Cranberry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we understand each other. <laughs> so, any more fans of cranberry? No, it's basically orange and apple. I see. It's something like that. So. Our next drink is finished. I don't know if anyone can read the tweets on the right side. Uh, yeah, we did reload. Yeah, the problem is that we are, we are gathering 100 tweets and here we, we can only see 23. So, maybe so are you guys planning on opening a bar? Like, are you guys planning on opening a bar that you just tweet your drinks and just go and get it afterwards? Are you interested? Well, I mean, there are plenty of uh, options, of course. I mean, like, like I mentioned before, you can open a bar, trade the cocktail of the day, cocktail of the moment, cocktail of the second. It's, um, yeah. It's, uh, uh, we had a question: Why, why does my tweet not show up on the on the interface? It's because we are gathering a hundred tweets to actually create a smoothie, and we are only displaying twenty-three or something like that. So maybe your, your tweet is not there, but you can see that cranberry is at 7% right now. Five minutes ago, it was at 3%. So there is a small change. Uh, yes, actually, this is how we, we collect. Another question we had from the audience is, if we mention 10 times the word cranberry in one tweet, does the amount change? And the answer is yes, because we actually uh, me measure all the mentions from, from each tweet. So uh, if anybody has a question from the audience, I'll just be happy to, okay, here. So from your data, you uh, in how many tweets are there uh, mentioned fruits at all? <laughs> How many tweets do you have together to get 100 tweets which contain fruits? Well, that's uh, an interesting question, but uh, I, I, uh, we, we, we don't really know how many tweets it goes through in the timeline to actually... Uh, we yeah. don't really know. With, with the Twitter API, all we, all we can do is say, give me back the 100 latest tweets that contain mentions of the specific flavors. So we don't really know how many tweets the Twitter API went through to actually give us back those uh, 100 tweets. But it's the 100 latest uh, tweets. If we all start tweeting now again, you know, we'll see. Uh, any other questions? Any questions from the audience? Anybody want a smoothie? <laughs> Thirsty, anyone? One more time? Yeah, let's do one more. Let's do one more. <laughs> so somebody <laughs> tweeted at Justin Bieber. <laughs> oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? This is Justin Bieber, right? Is this is he? The yeah. amount of junk we went through while yeah. reading this uh, these tweets was uh, yeah. <laughs> unreal when we were making this project. So, do we want Justin Bieber influencing our our smoothies? <laughs> no, I think not. <laughs> Almost there. So we managed to increase cranberry to 10% now. Only 10% uh, we, cranberry. We better, but still, pineapple is way is way much better. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. I'm disappointed, guys. Only 10% cranberry. All right, I'll have some. But we raised it from 3%. So yeah, I we did. I, I guess we did a good job. <laughs> cool. All right. So, who's up for some more? So, the new ones are. Yeah. We have more cups. Yeah. 
right here. Does anybody have a question? Yes. Uh, I've got a question. Are you planning to go commercial with your idea or is it just an experiment? It seems to be an experiment, a one time. Oh, yeah. well, we should steal the idea and open up a bar. You like cranberry, right? So. Yeah, cranberry cool. <laughs> we <laughs> to, an to answer your question, if we want to go commercial with the idea, it was we, we, we st the process was quite complicated and in the initial point we had it in our mind as an experiment. And what our aim is, is just to actually provoke some discussion whether graphics is the only way to efficiently represent data. Are there any other ways? That was the main aim of our project. Now if some commercial uh, use comes comes in, we are going to welcome it. I don't know. All right, let's have a round of applause for Tasty Sweets from Denmark. Thank you so much, guys. Ribbon, Costa, Kat, thanks. So if you want more, there is some more. They'll be happy to make some more smoothies. For now, thanks. Thanks, Raul, for coming out. So after this, we have a Mobile Monday meetup. And Mobile Monday is a, a worldwide network of... Uh, of local organizations that gather once a month to hold uh, meetups, uh, exchange cards, have gin tonics uh, with people from the mobile industry and they are quite big and what we tried to do was gather all the people from the European chapters and have one big uh, happy EU uh, mo mobile Monday gathering. So we'll be having some important speakers, some keynotes, a Pecha Kucha session and a panel afterwards. So if you uh, are into mobile technology or would like to meet some of the people, stick around. Thanks. <laughs>